acute renal failure goes through phases, the first phase of which is the oligeric phase. In the oligeric phase, your patient is going to look like a patient who has chronic renal failure. In other words, your patient is going to have the symptoms of first oligeria, decreased urine output, plus the symptoms of an increase in urea nitrogen. So BUN starts to build up in the body because it's not being filtered out, and urea nitrogen is very irritating to the tissue. So urea nitrogen is going to cause irritation of the brain, and the patient's going to have central nervous system depression. It's going to cause peripheral nervous system irritability, and what we can see is the patient develops peripheral nervous system irritability as evidenced by asterixis. To test for asterixis, you ask the patient to hold their arm out at their side and raise the palm up. Because of peripheral nervous system irritability, the patient cannot hold their hand up. Instead, the hand will flap. That's called asterixis. We also call this liver flap because it happens in patients who have liver disease and have a high ammonia level. So that's as asterixis. Now, urea nitrogen is also irritating to other parts of the body, like the GI tract, and the patient can then develop anorexia because they've got mouth sores, etc., or GI bleeding, also as results of high urea nitrogen. Because the kidneys are not filtering out our electrolytes, the potassium level builds up, sodium level goes down, and the patient develops a metabolic acidosis. Now, in acute renal failure, remember that all this stuff is happening suddenly. Not only is it happening suddenly, but it's happening secondarily to something else. Acute renal failure is a secondary disease. Nobody comes to the hospital with acute renal failure. They come to the hospital with sepsis, or the patient came to the hospital with a myocardial infarction, and then develops acute renal failure. So acute renal failure is secondary to something else, and because of that, it has a high mortality. Mortality in acute renal failure is approximately 40%. Whereas in chronic renal failure, if your patient's on dialysis, the mortality is less than 1%. Big difference. Again, it's because acute renal failure is sudden, and it's secondary to something else. So our patient is not going to tolerate these symptoms very well. <laughs> Although the treatment is similar to chronic renal failure, and then we're going to do dialysis, fluid restriction, and renal diet. Again, remember that it's quite different than chronic renal failure, and that the patient's going to tolerate these things a lot less than they do in chronic renal failure. So, what would be more helpful is to do daily dialysis in this patient population than every other day dialysis. See, when we do dialysis every other day, we allow those waste products to build up, then we dump them off, build up, dump them off. If we do daily dialysis, there's less of a buildup. Okay? And that's associated with fewer complications and a lower mortality rate. The next phase is called the diuretic phase, and in the diuretic phase, as the name implies, your patient starts to diurese. At this point in time, your patient may be diuresing quite a bit. So the urine output in the oligeric phase may have been 5 cc's an hour. Now the urine output increases to 200 to 300 cc's an hour. Dramatic increase in urine output. But what's happening is the kidneys are just opening up. Okay, so they're just kind of opening up and letting stuff spill through. They're not filtering. So your patient will continue to need dialysis to filter out the waste products, but at the same time may also require fluid and electrolyte replacements. Now that's weird. All right, you got this patient who's on dialysis who's getting potassium supplements and fluid boluses. Okay, so kind of a strange point in time here when the patient's in the diuretic phase. But the diuretic phase is a good sign. It indicates that your patient is starting to recover. Then lastly, we have the recovery phase. So this diagram here is illustrating that in the oligeric phase, the BUN and creatinine will rise sharply. That during the diuretic phase, the patient starts to dump off some of that BUN and creatinine, and we end up having the BUN and creatinine lower considerably. Doesn't come back to baseline, but we do dump off some of that BUN and creatinine. 
Now, the kidneys really are not filtering yet during the diuretic phase, so it's going to take weeks to months for the kidneys to recover, to heal up, and for that renal function to come back and the BUN and creatinine to come back to baseline. Now, that phase we call the recovery phase. So during that period from weeks to months, when the patient is recovering and recovering that BUN and creatinine back to normal, that's a long period of time before we actually get back to semi-normal renal function. 